Have you ever applied a dressing to a child's thigh? It looks great. Then they stand up and the whole thing just kind of and ends up in a heap around their knees. I'm sure that I'm not the only one that that's happened to. I'm gonna show you my technique for how to avoid that. And I'm gonna give you some strategies and tips for how to get a thigh dressing to stay on and stay firm even when the child is standing up. Thigh dressings are commonly used for burns in children, but they may be used for other reasons. So I'm going to show you how I apply the secondary dressing in this case. You'll have considered what kind of primary dressing you need. So if that's for a burn, you might be thinking about something like Gelinet or Atraman that's, that's impregnated, or you may be using some kind of silicone dressing or whatever else is appropriate to the wound underneath. As ever in paediatrics, preparation is key. So think about distraction, first of all, make sure that you've got your play specialist involved and that the child is as comfortable as possible with their parents, that they've got something to do, whether they're blowing bubbles, watching a video or doing something just to keep them distracted. Make sure that they've had adequate analgesia because sometimes putting dressings on and just any disturbance of that wound is quite painful. In terms of analgesia for burns, we would often use some kind of intranasal analgesia like diamorphine or fentanyl, as well as uh, oral medication such as paracetamol and ibuprofen. For older children, I often use Entonox uh, while I'm doing a dressing. And if it's a very painful dressing, such as a, you know, very painful wound, such as a burn that needs to be de-roofed and the child is going to find that very painful if it's extensive, I would also think about sedating them. Once you've got all that organized, you can think about actually preparing the dressing that you're going to use. In younger children, remove the nappy or underwear before you start if you can, if that's not gonna cause them any distress. And in older children, just get them to pull their underwear out of the way so that you can get to the area properly. Once you've got the primary dressing on, and ideally you're going to do this with the child standing up so that you know that it will in fact hold as they're standing up. Get some kind of um, highly absorbent padded dressing. So either some Gamgee or a Sergi pad, something like that, and make sure that it's big enough to go all the way around the child's leg. Cut a sort of crescent shape out of the padding so that you can fit that quite snugly up into the child's groin and then wrap the rest of it around their leg. And then either hold that in place or get somebody else to hold it in place as you bandage with a crepe bandage firmly around the padding. When we bandage, we always bandage from joint to joint and we always bandage towards the heart. Now a common mistake here is to just bandage in a spiral shape like that. But actually the whole thing is going to be a whole lot more secure if you use a figure of eight shape bandaging. So on one turn you're kind of heading upward up the lib and on the next turn you're heading slightly downwards and then you get that lovely crisscross shape of a bandage. That is actually much more secure and is much more likely to prevent slippage of the bandage down the leg. Once you've come all the way around the top of the limb, you can just secure that with some tape if it's an older child. If it's a younger child, what I like to do is just to come up even further and wrap the bandage a couple of times around the child's waist then back down onto the leg and up again. That just makes the whole thing much more secure and much less prone to slipping. As much as you possibly can, apply the bandage with the child standing up because that way you know that it's actually gonna hold when they do stand up. You can see that this technique leaves the child's bottom exposed so that the nappy can be changed or they can go to the toilet without getting that soiled, hopefully. As a final insurance policy, you can add a tubular bandage over the top of the crepe bandage that you've already applied. So that could either be some tubey fast or Surginet one of those type of things. What you're going to do is to make a cut just a little bit more than halfway along the bandage. And that is so that some of it can go around the waist and some of it can go around the leg. What you're going to do is to get the child to put one leg through the bottom section that's going to go up their thigh and then both legs through the top section that comes around their waist. Hold it up and have a think about how you're going to apply it because this bit does mess with your mind a little bit the first couple of times. What you want is the child to have one leg through the bottom section and then both legs through the top section so that you can then just pull it up like a pair of pants and you've got it round the thigh 
and around the waist over the top of the bandage. You can see that that is quite a firm way of keeping a thigh dressing secure on a small child. If the child's got burns or needs dressings on both legs, then you can just do a mirror image on the other side, again, coming up onto the waist to keep the whole thing secure. Hopefully you can see that that is a fairly secure way of getting a bandage on a child's leg and stopping it from slipping down. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And if you've got any other top tips, please do share them below. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.